What is everybody? Welcome to the Domo Nation, the new Domo Nation podcast, the one that I'm actually going to attempt to do every week now. Uh, welcome. Uh, this is Silver Screen Podcast as the first episode where today I'm just going to be talking about my favorite Spielberg movies. Let me just uh, adjust that right now because, like, it's, it's kind of bothering me. Kind of. Sort of. Anyway. Um, anyway. Yeah, today I'm going to be talking about my favorite Steven Spielberg movies, and this is going to be a fun topic to talk about because I love Spielberg movies. So anyway, let's get into it with uh, my... Let, let's... Uh, this is going to be top three uh, Spielberg movies. Let's go from three to uh, number one. Um, at number three, I have Indiana Jones Temple of Doom. Now, uh, Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom holds a special place in my heart because... Uh, the first Indiana Jones trailer, I mean, the first Indiana Jones movie I ever saw was King, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. <laughs> and, I, and I remember loving it. And then, like, I saw the rest of the indie tr- uh, franchise, and I was like, these are all really good. And then I revisit uh, King uh, Crystal Skull later, and I'm like, uh, no, it wasn't that good. And um, I also rewatched Temple of Doom during that period of time. And I love it. I, I think that Temple of Doom is the best Indiana Jones movie. I, I, there is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I think it is. And it is quite possibly it, my, one of my favorite movies of all time. And it'll always hold that special place in my heart. But anyway, um, Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom obviously follows Indiana Jones. Um, I think it's this time. <laughs> Like, it's, um, shit, what am I thinking of? Um, like, I forgot the artifact he's after, but, um, if, the, if he's even looking for an artifact, but, um, it, it is a good movie. I, I enjoy myself, um, sometimes, but, <laughs> sometimes, all the time whenever I'm watching that movie, but it it's one of the best Spielberg movies still. Um, I don't really have a lot of say about it, because, like, I don't remember a lot, because my brain is like mush, cause I had to work at a festival uh, today. So let's just move on to number two, which I have a lot to say about. And while I'm talking, it might even change to my number one. Uh, but yeah, number two is Ready Player One. <laughs> uh, I I oh my god, guys, I'm so sorry. I love Ready Player One so much. Um, I have uh um Artie and um. I have both Artie Funko Pops right next to me um, on my shelf, and I and I'm I'm loving it. Um, I, I have the uh, the normal one. I have the GameStop exclusive copper version, which I don't know why they would give Artie the copper uh, pop, but hey, why not? I mean, she wasn't she wasn't the first person to find the Jade Key. She was. So I don't know why they gave her the copper one. They could, should have given give Parzival the copper one. But then again, they would have had to have given the Sixer the uh, uh, the crystal one, which I wouldn't have minded. I'm getting them all anyway. I mean, maybe not the Chase Sixer. But if I can find the Chase Sixer, I guarantee I'm going to buy it. Or if I can find it on eBay for a good price, I'll definitely pick it up. But yeah, there, there is no overestimating this movie, uh, overestimating this movie for me. I just remember to have my GameStop rewards card in my hand. Um, so I'm gonna put that in my wallet uh, while I talk about Ready Player One for like half an hour. <laughs> Not even talk about my favorite Spielberg movie of all time, which is Jaws. Um, but yeah, I I I enjoy. Ready Player One a lot more than most people. And I think it's a very unhealthy thing because Ready Player One is literally the definition of, hey, you want, you want a nerdgasm in two hours? Come see our movie. And that's what, that was like, that was like the thought, the, the, the fraught, the thought process behind seeing Ready Player One, like, nerdgasm. I'm gonna have it. I'm seeing Ready Player One. So, <laughs> that was my thought process during that entire thing. And I can't wait. Um, like, I, I just love the story of it. The story of going uh, mostly into VR, which is really just 
the world of VR, like, in the future, is probably so inevitable. Holy shit. Oh, yeah, I'm tired. I'm um, like, the, fa the, the thing is, we're probably going to one day have our own Oasis and a holiday con a Easter egg contest. And when that day happens, I'm taking the skin of Artemis from Ready Player One, that sounds really bad, and I'm going to use the same name, and I'm going to become a Gunter, and I'm going to search for that goddamn egg. Hey, you believe it or not, you sick sons of bitches. I guarantee, if it was just between everybody in my school that wasn't a teacher or a staff member, I would find the egg first, because I know a lot about 80s. The 80s were some were some of the weirdest times, but they also had some of the best pop culture. And, like, Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, which are both referenced in Ready Player One. Um, same for Alien. Um, Aliens, Alien 3. Um, what else what did they reference? They referenced a lot of stuff. Um, <laughs> uh, Gundam. Um, Battletoads. The 2014 Ninja Turtles. Um, the DeLorean kit from Knight Rider. Um, I don't think they referenced Ghostbusters. If they did, I didn't catch it. Akira. They mentioned so many things. Like, I, 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 I finished the book in two and a half days. Uh, I eventually plan, like, next week on, like, doing an entire reading of the book in one sitting. If I can try and do that, I would love to. Uh, I would have to have, like, food <sighs> on the ready. Like, I wouldn't mind doing that. It, would, it, it seems fun. Um, but, like, uh, my favorite character in the entire movie is Artemis. She's written so well, and that's why I got her her two Funko Pops first. Um, her character is just wit written, written, written so well to me. Um, also, another character that I absolutely loved was Daito. Now, Daito, in the book, gets <laughs> fucking murked. Ah, uh, poor Daito. Um... But he survives in this one, like, in real life. He gets killed. Uh, IOI kills him and throws him off a roof, just in case you didn't read the book. Spoilers, I guess. Um, but yeah, like, he didn't die in this movie. Technically. Like, in real life, he doesn't die. But in, like, the Oasis, obviously he does, even before the Cataclysm is even pulled up. So I guess in a sense he was always going to die in the movie, but they didn't, because Spielberg is such a nice dude, he didn't want to kill um, any of the characters, like any of the characters in real life, because that's not like his thing, he doesn't like killing characters just for the sake of killing a character, which I really, I, I really respect him for that, and I love him even more for it. <laughs> So, um, yeah, funny how I say this is a podcast, right now I'm doing air quotes, I'm like, it, it's gonna be short, like I'd say at least 15 minutes long, because it's not really a podcast episode proper yet, uh, I'm still trying to figure out how I want to do podcasts, so this is like 15 minutes, so yeah, at minimum 15 minutes, um. But yeah, I, I enjoy Ready Player One. I love it even more every time I think about it. And when I read the book, I was like, yes. Um, and I wanted to see it again today and tomorrow before I saw Avengers tomorrow. But it doesn't matter anyway. I'm seeing Avengers tomorrow and I don't really care. Um, so I got to get my Thanos out and be like, yo, bro. To uh, our, our theater dude that... Um, one of our theater employees and be like, yo, bro, you know, I'm seeing it right. And he's going to hope and they're going to hopefully see the Thanos and Funko pop in my hand. And they're going to be like, I see you. <laughs> and I'm going to be like, yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm going to do tomorrow. I'm going to bring Thanos. I'm going to be like, you know what we're seeing? Hey, you, you know what we going to see, right? And they're going to hopefully see the Thanos in my hand. And then they're going to be like, plow no, say plow more, bro. Um, say plow more, fam. Anyway, um, number one, Burger King nut lettuce. No, I'm kidding. 
Uh, number one is Jaws. I, I, the, the more I think about Ready Player One, and I was, I didn't want to talk about Ready Player One for a long time, so I was like, okay, get Ready Player One out of the way before you say it's better than Jaws. Like, you're, no, get it out of the way. So I'm still waiting on those Jaws pops, Funko. <laughs> I am seriously waiting on those Jaws pops, because, like, seriously, when are you gonna make them? I want them. I want them now. I want them now, goddammit. Ow, I just popped my nose. That hurt. <laughs> so yeah, Jaws is my favorite uh, movie. It's my favorite shark movie. Uh, that's not saying much. There's not much in the competition except the other Jaws movies, Sharknado and I and the um, and the Meg, which comes out. <laughs> and the Meg, which comes out this summer, I think. I mean, I, I, I could be wrong. There could be more shark movies that I just don't know about. But Hey, boy! Um, yeah, I, this, this is where Spielberg practically started. The, everything that could have went wrong on the set of Jaws went wrong. And that's why I love Jaws so much, is because it's, it's, it's just it's so good. It's so good. Um, and the score by John Williams is the dun 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 It's so good. In fact that he won an Academy Award for it. Thank you. I don't think he's won uh I don't think he ever won an Academy Award for Star Wars, which is kind of unfortunate. Um correct me if I'm wrong, I could be one hundred percent wrong about that, but like the shark looks so good. The cast, Roy Schneider in this movie is so good. <laughs> Quentin in this movie, uh, I forget the actor's name, but he's fantastic. Love that character, Quentin. Um, I mean, I'll be honest, uh, The Adventures of Tintin, that movie, I, it, to me, it feels like a, a ripoff of Jaws, <laughs> and he made it, um, it, it just feels like a carbon copy of Jaws to me, and, I mean, maybe I'll have to rewatch it, look for the undertones of the film, but I, I don't like The Adventures of Tintin, never have, and I probably never will, um, but I love Ready Player One, let's talk about Ready Player One again, no, I'm kidding, uh, let's continue talking about Jaws, um, anyway, the shark in this movie it's, it's like one of the best practical effects I've ever seen in all of cinema. It's 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 really cool to see the the, the way the sh they made the shark die, which was just impale it with the front of the ship and have it just sink to the bottom slowly, um, which was repeated in Jaws: uh, The Revenge. Um, which is dumb, <laughs> because, like, the original cut had the shark exploding, like, <laughs> like, it, it roars like a fucking lion, and it explodes. What? <laughs> uh, that's how I feel about Jaws of Revenge in a nutshell. It's just like, what? Why? Why? That's how I feel about Jaws of Revenge. It's just like, why? Why? Just why? Uh, it shouldn't exist, but it does, unfortunately, and it kind of tarnishes the reputation of Jaws. But, um, yeah, <laughs> that was a short mini-sode of, um, uh, the new pod, my new podcast, Silver Spoon Podcast. Um, look for it every sat uh, sa Saturday. I say Saturday, right? Yeah, Saturday. <laughs> for um, uh, more episodes and uh, until next time you guys will be seeing Artemis and Artemis in my background like forever that's how this is going to work even when I move out of my parents house which I'm that's not going to happen for another four years um, or maybe even th uh, maybe even five for that matter that's not going to happen Un and until that happens like once I start moving I'm not going to make any videos like, once I have my backdrop set up, I'm going to be like, okay, Artemis and Artemis are always going to be in my background, so. 
Yeah, thanks for tuning in to this mini-sode of the of the new donation podcast, the Silver Stream Podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I plan to do longer episodes. Um, I already meet, met my minimum quota. Um, next, next, um, uh, next week, I'm going to be talking about some, uh, um, not really underrated movies, but, like, movies that I loved that either critics or fans hated. Um, and, uh, oh, I tell you, two movies that are going to be on there. Um, one of them is going to be Transformers Last Night. And the other one is going to be Star Wars The Last Jedi, or Ghostbusters, or maybe even I might throw in Justice League just to trigger some people that actually like the movie. Because I'm on the critic side. I saw Justice League and I was like, I saw the second, I, I saw it the first time, I was like, yeah, it was okay, but it was disappointing. I saw the second time, I was like, fuck this shit. So I'm like, yeah, tune in next week to, for those movies being talked about. <laughs> and so next time, guys. Till next time, uh, be good people.